Welcome to our brand new 2021 shop tour. The reason I say new is because this is our third shop in one year. You guys already know what tools I have, you know my setup, so instead of boring you with another shop tour, we're gonna do this one a little bit differently. What's changed since our 200 square foot backyard shop to this new 2400 square foot storefront? Let's start in the showroom. Okay, so the biggest, most notable difference is obviously the storefront. We were lucky enough to land a three-year lease in a place called Camelback East. It's rated number one for best neighborhood for young professionals in Phoenix. And it's also rated number two for most traffic in the city. Because we landed in such an amazing area, I wanted to take advantage of this new visibility that we've never had before. So I decided to dedicate a few hundred square feet in the front of our shop for a showroom, a coffee shop too. It was a terrible idea. He was already busy enough as it is. Now he's in the coffee shop making coffee for people all day and hanging out while I do all the work. I mean, most of the time I can't even get a question answered. I think the best part of this new space is the showroom because it gives our customers a glimpse into what it is that we do. Beautiful tools, making beautiful furniture on an heirloom workbench, it's all inspiring. I think it was, it was really crucial for us to have floor to ceiling glass because that allows them to really watch us work and hopefully be inspired and maybe sign up for a class. So let's go check out the shop. We'll start from the back. Okay, so this is where the magic starts. Peterman Lumber rolls up with our order. We offload it onto these racks, which are strategically and conveniently mounted right here at the beginning of the bay. Now, normally we would need to hand stack all the lumber, but a huge benefit to this new shop versus our backyard shop is now we have the space for a forklift. So much time and physical stress is saved. We simply offload the truck, pull the forklift right in and effortlessly just set the stack right on our lumber racks. Okay, so our lumber is on the racks and we're ready to start a new project. The first thing that you're gonna notice is our milling tools. We don't need to really talk about workflow because everyone's shop is set up the same. Crosscut, joint, plane, rip, resaw, it's always the same. So instead of boring you with why we set up the shop the way we did, let's just do a rapid fire series of questions that I most commonly get about milling. Should I buy a Capex? Okay, so there are only two reasons in my opinion to buy a Capex. One is that you're using your miter saw for finished cuts, maybe like case and base, something like that. Uh, second reason is you just have money burning a hole in your pocket and you want something to do with it. You wanna buy something that looks cool. We haven't used our miter saw for finished cuts ever since we discovered the sled for table saws. How big of a joiner should I get? Not a six inch, if that's what you're asking. Size matters. Oh, should I get a helical head? Yes, 100% of the time, a helical head is always worth it. So I have a six inch joiner. Let's say I have an eight inch board. How do I joint that? <laughs> Glad you asked. Simply remove the guard off the jointer. Carefully, carefully run the face through. Once that's flat, move on to the planer and run the jointed flat section on top of a piece of ply or MDF. The planer will machine the top side parallel with the jointed section. Once the top side is planed flat, ditch the MDF and flip the board, plane the bottom to desired thick nigh. That's a nice bandsaw. That's, that's not really a question. That's a nice bandsaw? Yeah, it's a pretty nice bandsaw. Has anyone in your shop activated the saw stop table saw? Let's just say Eric's not allowed to use the table saw anymore. Okay, so moving on to a very, very important tool in the shop, our dust processor. This is the Harvey G700. I'll keep it brief, but there's a few key things that I really love about this machine. Obviously, the biggest one is the sound. The noise decibels are lower than anything else on the market, and that's really important for our shop because our next door neighbor is a hair salon. Secondly, this suction on this machine is more consistent longer than any machine that we've ever had. And that's because of the filter staying clean longer. The reason the filter can stay clean longer is because they have a dual cyclone that dumps the chips into two separate bins. Those two separate bins are separated by coarse and then medium, and only the very fine particles make it into the filter. Because of that, the filters stay cleaner longer. When the filters are cleaner longer, that means your suction is stronger for a longer duration. So typically we have full suction 
up until the bin's full needs to be emptied and then we need to clean everything out. Now, this machine really isn't big enough for a shop of our size. I really wish we would have got the bigger one, so hopefully we'll be making the upgrade soon. Okay, so moving on to our Shop Saver Pro 408. You've probably seen a video on this before in the past. I love this machine. The only regret I have is that I did not get the automatic tool changer when I purchased this machine. And that was really just due to lack of power and space. When I bought this machine, I was still in my garage at my house and we didn't have the headroom and we didn't have the amount of power that we need from our electrical panel to power all the excessive things we needed for that automatic tool changer. Now, if I wanted to add it on, it's a costly $10,000 plus the necessary downtime to get it all outfitted on there. So, wish I would've got that in an actual shop before we would've bought that machine. Okay, so this is our copy lathe. Now, don't get me wrong, I love freehanding some turning tools. In this shop, we make a lot of production items and I need to be able to make accurate and repeatable turned elements uh, pretty consistently. So, this gives us the ability to do that. I actually want to upgrade to a much nicer version at some point, maybe something where you can still get the cutter heads for it. So as we move further down into the shop and we get closer to the front, we get to our assembly area. Now this is where we keep our glue, our sandpaper, our sanders, our finish, all of that stuff in these cabinets here. And this area changes more than anything else because we have many tables and we can change it up and fit our needs for whatever project we're working on at the time. I hate it. Like it's an amazing space there's so much you can do, but what good is it when you don't even have adequate lighting? Like this is finished work and I can't see shit. Okay, so the last little pocket of space is what I call our hand tool and workbench area. This is what everyone sees from the coffee shop showroom. This is where we do all of our fine cut joinery, anything that we would be okay with somebody seeing from the outside. It's also where we do all of our sharpening. We use Tormek primarily and I've said this before many times, they are really the best. All right, so I hope you liked this video. I tried to break up the monotony of the traditional shop tour. If you did like it, please like, comment, and consider subscribing, and we'll catch you in the next one. How much trust do you have in you guys? I mean, I completely trust my guys. If I'm not in the shop, I know that they're gonna be getting things done. Never feel like I have to watch them or make sure they're working or anything like that. When I'm not there, I know they got it. They always hold down the fort. They always do. Complete trust, 100%.